basement of the Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, where she lives. And they were responding to some regional emergency, a tornado or a flood or something. And the suggestion had been made that the, the, the women of the Women's Association of that church work with the Women's Association of the Methodist Church to accomplish feeding this crowd. And one of the women looks at the other and goes, I can't do that. They're Arminian. Yeah, but you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's that's real. still now. That's that's <laughs> now, and it's going to be then. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be then. It's a people. Yeah, we're, oh, there's boy. still people. Yeah. We'll still do stupid things. You were, you were, you just were talking about the Methodists. My grandfather was a free Methodist minister, mm -hmm. and the difference between the what is now the United Methodist Church and the Free Methodist Church is that the Free Methodist Church felt that musical instruments in church uh, was was evil altogether and and altogether shouldn't happen and that's the only doctrinal difference between the free methodists who generally are relatively poor people who live up in the hills and the, the uh, united methodists who generally aren't so you know so these things are going to keep right on going time is going to pass and not everything is going to change. A high proportion of the population will continue worrying about the things that it worried about and just ignore it. and just ignore the changes that are happening unless they directly happen to impinge. Uh, they may go right on squabbling until the surveyors for the railroad right of way come in their immediate vicinity, at which point, all of a sudden, the changes introduced will become of immediate and crucial interest. And they will to band them. together and picket the railroad. <laughs> yes, they really will. Yes. And they will write eternal petitions. Yes. And letters to and the letters. editor. And letters to the editor. And how dare they put it on this side of the valley when obviously. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've tried. I've tried many times to sort of clue people in on this kind of thing just with asides that I write in the various stories. But uh, if you've gotten to the latest Ring of Fire book, uh, three. Ring of Fire 3. My story uh, sets up uh, why Duke Bernhardt of Saxe Weimar is going to marry Claudia de Medici, the regent of Tyrol. And then the novella I've done for The Wars on the Rhine, which will be coming out sometime next year, uh, goes into a marriage of the marriage of this odd couple uh, who have been brought together as one of their advisors says by a strong appreciation of the value of Swabian real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and nothing else. And nothing else. <laughs> He's Lutheran. She's Catholic. He's poorly educated. She's cultural. She's going to discover what his taste in music is and say, rather unhappily, I guess introducing opera to Bézançon has just dropped to the bottom of my list of priorities. <laughs> uh, Better to, to use country western. <laughs> uh, actually, what she discovers is that uh, somebody has sent Bernhardt a new hymnal which includes the hymns that Paul Gerhardt would have written up through the 1650s, and which now are already available, so Paul Gerhardt can write something else. And Bernhardt looks at one of them and says, 15 verses. Now that's what I call a hymn with meat on his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And on, and on, and yes. on. Oh, my. <laughs> he says, I can appreciate this sentiment. And when I pray, my foes before me fly, 
If only it were that easy. Okay, so you've been talking about that, and mm -hmm. I know that we've taken you down these paths so many times and asked you some of these questions so many times. But, but in terms of the subject of today's, you know, in terms of the title of this, the time past and the past, um, you know, the I, you've been doing a really good job of explaining to us this idea of the complexity of the early modern society, mm -hmm. that there's the remnants of the feudalism, that there's the remnants of king, of, of divine rights of kings and all of that, and, and these scattered little pieces of land because everybody inherited these little scattered pieces and, and the interbreeding and crossbreeding has resulted in bizarre little boundaries. And, 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 and so we've got this complexity and simplicity is a long ways away. Okay. So the complexity had to take a long time to get there. I mean, it, it, there had to be the transition from what we think of as medieval times, you know, this the this, dark ages, this, this compression of history that there's the for, especially for Americans that there's the Civil War and then there's the Revolutionary War and then at some point there was the Renaissance and the plagues and maybe the Romans, you know, and everything kind of gets squished together. So, so when we're talking about the 16th of the 17th century. The transition to getting to this level of complexity, you know, when, when people are thinking about that simpler stuff, how many centuries are we talking about? Transition. Well, you know, let's go back to the word renaissance. What a cool Which word. is a really slippery right. concept. Especially depending on what country or what area yeah, you're Yeah, that's what we're going to. Because you're, when we're saying how long did the transition take, right. when we talk about Renaissance in Italy, we start talking about it if we are sensible and do not want to interpret Dante Alighieri as having been a Renaissance man. If we take a reasonable <laughs> interpretation of the Renaissance, he was Were you ever a college professor or something? <laughs> he was on drugs. He was on drugs. Yeah. The real Renaissance in Italy uh, involving a revival of classical humanism, not only reading the literature, but adopting many of its Platitudes. values and uh, producing new art and literature intended to be modeled upon it roughly starts in the middle of the 14th century. 1300s, 1350. Middle 1300s. So 300 uh, years 300 years early. <laughs> and that's it. And we are talking very reasonably about the high point of the English Renaissance, <laughs> Shakespeare and the like, essentially contemporary with what is happening with the Ring of Fire. Ben Jonson is still alive. He's going to appear in Eric's next story. Right. But, but he was mentioned. Oh, mentioned but he's he's been mentioned, here. but he's going he's to be a character. Be he's oh, been okay. off stage until now. He's been so, off stage. Right. Oh, he's right. going to be oh, in oh. this <laughs> this, is, this is your subtle way of reminding us that England was a cultural backwater. and intellectual backwater. <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> it I, certainly but remember, was. it has taken the Italians three centuries of unremitting effort to do what they consider a reasonable job of civilizing Europe north of the Alps. Right. They've been sending throughout this whole period musicians, artists, military strategists, uh, they have been bombarding Europe north of the Alps with everything from Ivor's dance teacher to people who teach etiquette to, you know, you name it, they've been sending it. Italy's Even food main experts export cooking. during this period was intelligence. Experts. Intel experts. 
Yeah. Engineers. No. Garden designers. Architects. You name Sculptors, it. Sculptors. Everything. Yeah, they Folks. Did. Yeah. Not so true. It's true. You name it, they sent it. But that is how long the transition basically took from medieval in the sense of the knight in shining armor to the complicated and messy situation we <coughs> deal with in the early 17th century. Now, from this point on, really, the change is going to go way faster. Uh, think of what Napoleon accomplished in the way of simplifying the map of the Germanies. Although they aren't going to get rid of all the little complications, basically what the series did with setting up those provinces at the Council of Copenhagen was put an intermediate level of administration between the imperial government in Magdeburg and the rest of the population, so that Magdeburg, the USC parliament, the emperor, the prime minister, will basically be dealing with the provinces now and the provincial officials, and they are going to have to deal with all the little complications at the lower level. Now, I was in Germany in the 1970s during the great era of what they call rationalisierung, <laughs> the rationalization of local government. <laughs> this can best be compared in this country to the pro process of consolidating rural school districts in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. They basically simply <laughs> compel all of these peculiar little jurisdictions to consolidate into what are now the Landkreise, the equivalent of a county with each of the Bundesländers. School districts are still angry about that. So are the German localities, <laughs> believe me. Oh yeah. I talked to, I, last I year, I talked to a bunch of random Nuremburgers who are still pissed off that they live in Bavaria. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, everybody hates Bavaria. Uh, but the, it will happen. It will. It will not happen immediately, any more than it happened immediately between 1945 and the 1970s. Right. It took that long for the German Bundesländer to get things organized to the point that they could force Rationalisierung on the lower level entities. Well, and now they have the whole new joy of East Germany being reabsorbed. Yes, and that, that's that's, oh, that's a whole different that's a whole nightmare. Different issue. Oh, so, but what you're but saying, what I'm is, saying is, yeah. it's going to take probably it's going to happen a lot faster than it did in our world. Right. It's going to happen in the 1660s, not in the 1970s. Right. But it's not going to happen in 1636. Right. And and and. Looking backwards, getting to where we are now in that early modern, as you said, the Italians spent 300 years sending cultural emissaries north to, to try to. But they didn't have the rituals. Yeah, that's true. But, but, but they had to walk. Yeah, they had to walk. But 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 and yeah. then they didn't manage to get across the English Channel. So that's true. <laughs> Although um, there was a lot. Do you know who was the first? Professor of Chemistry at the University of Cambridge. He was an Italian. 